Hi, I'm Natalie from Namaste Farms and I'm going to talk about coat color genetics in Angora goats today. I have tried to make this video at least 50 times and I end up tripping up and stuttering and writing something wrong and it's ridiculous. The problem is I actually know the information so if I trip up I'm just going to keep going so that we actually can get this information out there for you. Um, I have a Master's of Science and a Bachelor's of Science in Animal Science from Cal Poly State University San Luis Obispo and I also have studied molecular genetics and molecular biology. That said, color genetics in Angora goats is very difficult and the reason is is that there are several genes governing the colors. Um, today we're going to talk most specifically about the white Angora goat and the color factor white Angora goat. So in a second we're going to take you to the whiteboard and I'm going to explain some basic terminology from Bio 101 and we're going to go from there. Hang on just a second. Okay, so here we are at the whiteboard and this is going to be basic Bio 101. A gene is the smallest unit of inheritance. Genes come in pairs, one donated from the mother and one donated from the father. An allele is an alternate form of a gene. In eye color, it would be brown and blue. Those are alleles for the same gene. A homozygote or homozygous means that you have two copies of the same, like blue, blue, or brown, brown. Conversely, a heterozygote or heterozygous is you would have different copies, like brown, blue. Recessives have to have both copies of the gene. They need to be homozygous for it to be expressed phenotypically, for you to be able to see the actual, um, the way that the gene looks. Like in eye color, it would be blue. You have to have two copies of blue for somebody to actually phenotypically have blue eyes. Dominant, you only need one copy of the gene. So in the case of eye color, it would be brown. So if you're a homozygote, obviously you're going to see it. Even if you're a heterozygote for the brown gene, you're going to have brown eyes. Now, epistatic is sort of an important term in Angora goats, and it means that it masks everything else. So, um, essentially, the white Angora gene for coat color is epistatic to all other genes. It masks all other colors, and um, phenotypically, the way that the goat looks will always be white if that gene's present. There is one exception to that, and um, I can explain that later, but there is a black that crops out from a mating of the two white parents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on a pennant square, and this really totally is basic bio 101, how we end up or how we can predict what's going to happen when we mate a white goat to a colored goat. And why this is important and why this, it, we do this is so that we can improve the fleece characteristics of our colored angora goats. Okay, so why do we even care about white goats? Well, white goats are far superior to colored goats as far as fleece characteristics. And white goats are also purebred, and colored angoras technically aren't. I mean, somewhere in a colored angora's background, they have some other breed that has colored genetics. Um, the exception, of course, is the black dominant that crops out from a white on white mating. We use these white goats and these um, black dominant goats in our flocks of colored goats to try and improve their fleeces. The coverage on the white goat and the lock formation and the longevity and the structure um, cannot be beaten. So what we'll do is we'll take a white sire, for example, and breed it to a colored dam, and we end up getting all white babies, but they're colored factor. So we, in turn, can use those color factor, white color factor animals, in the next generation to breed it back on a colored goat and make the fleeces better. So I'm going to show you um, how to figure out uh, the expected progeny from this and then explain a little more about it. Okay, so I'm going to take a white buck in this situation and I'm going to breed it to a colored dam. Okay, so I know I have one copy of white from the mom, one copy of white from the, from the sire for this dad. For this dam, she is a homozygous recessive for color. She's a colored goat. So it's just basic math from here. And every time I see a W, because we already know that the white is dominant, we're going to have a white goat but it's going to be a white color factor goat. So it's really not white, but it's really not colored. We can't show it in colored shows because it's not a colored goat, it's white. But it's really not a white goat. It's not going to have near the fleece characteristics of a purebred white goat. So really it's sort of just, it's like this interim goat that we use purely for breeding and for upgrading our flocks. So here we are. You can see that genetically it's had donated a W and a C. This is all these two can donate because they're both homozygotes. These are all heterozygotes. They all have the dominant white gene, and so all of these goats are going to be um, phenotypically white. 
but they're going to carry this color gene, which means that they can pass color on to their babies. So then let's say two years later, because of this, the, this one has to grow up and it has to be a breeding age, we're going to take the, one of these white, white animals right here and we're going to use it because its fleeces, are, its fleece is better than its colored mother, probably not as good as its white daddy, but we're going to breed it back on a colored buck, most likely scenario. So we know our colored buck is going to be a homozygote. He's going to be homozygous recessive. So here are his genes. He has one copy from his mom, one copy from his dad. We're going to use this doe, and we're going to breed her to him. Okay, and here we are with the math again. Every time I see a W, I know I'm going to have a white doe. But here, I have two homozygous recessives, which means, theoretically, out of a mating of, and getting four babies, I should have half of them be colored. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the genes in um, Angora goats um, in just a second. Hang on. Okay, so here we are. I talked to Dr. Sponenberg, and he sort of broke this down for me as best as he could. I mean, I do have the background in molecular genetics, so I should be able to understand it, but it, it gets even confusing for me, I have to be honest with you. And I'm not, I, I don't mean like I've taken two classes in this sort of stuff. My entire master's degree was based on genetics. So if, if I can't get it, I can understand why you have a difficult time too. Anyway, though, that said, here we go. Let's just pretend we have two chromosomes here. I don't even know what chromosome coat color is on, but we're just going to pretend. One, remember, one's from the mom, one's from the dad. What gets confusing is the white angora goat locus is at one place, so let's just say it was here, and the black extension locus location is at another. So black, black extension. Oh, my handwriting is so nice, and white, and then. My handwriting is horrible. It's, I mean, honestly, it's embarrassing. The agouti. Okay, all of these that, that are for coat color are a different location. And that can be very confusing because what happens is white is epistatic to everything. So you might be able to have these other genes there, but it's covering them up. So think about that. If it's covering them up, then why can we have blacks crop out from white? Well, the way it works is we have, a, we have alleles. We have the white dominant, and it's usually, I think, signified, I can't really remember, like this. So one from the mom, one from the dad. It has a D. That's dominant. So this is a purebred goat. But they also have the white wild type. And white wild type allows for expression of other colors. So what happens is, is that if I have a, a homozygote white dominant, or even a heterozygote white dominant, I cannot have any expression from any other colors. But if I have a homozygote for the, for the white wild type, it's going to allow for expression, if I have this black extension gene, for the expression of this gene right here. And so I can get these black dominants. Conversely, because it does allow for this, the wild type, homozygous for the wild type, it will allow partial expression of other genes, including the agouti. And I'm not a thousand percent sure, but I'm pretty sure that that's why sometimes we see these white goats that have like kind of reddish legs or they're fade to red, because this is allowing for expression from other locations because it's the wild type. Similarly, what happens is the black extension locus, it also has a wild type. So I can have a black buck that's black, but if it is homozygous for the wild type, so then it would look like this. So you have the black dominant, black dominant, beautiful handwriting, I should have went into art. Then you have the black um, wild type. If you, are, if you are homozygous for the wild type black, you will be able to have expression from the agouti because this wild type is going to allow for expression. While the white dominant is epistatic to everything else, the black dominant is epistatic to agouti. So that's all I'm going to give you for today. I'm going to try and show you some more stuff with the Goody next time.